Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's session of Grade 12 Dramatic Arts Exam Revision, uh, powered by the Amat Power Collective, a nonprofit organization that aspires to create theater for change. My name is Lancelot August. In the first session, we looked at the history of theater as well as practical concepts and a dramatic arts reflection. In the second session, we looked at um, uh, South African theater from the period 1960 to 1994, with the play was Albert as a case study. And today we are looking at South African theater from post 1994 up until the, con uh, the contemporary age. And the play that we are looking at is nothing but the truth. So let's uh, jump straight into it. In today's session, we will be looking at you know the context and the story behind um, nothing but the truth, and then also we'll be looking at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and what exactly this meant for. Um, the play and nothing but the truth. We'll also be looking at the setting of the play as well as the dramatic devices used in the play and the themes that emanate from the from the production. And as always, we'll look at a revision question, specifically question 5.4 and 5.6 from the NSC National Senior Certificate November 2018 paper. So to jump straight into it, we're first going to look at the context uh, for Waza Albert. So Waza Albert uh, it was written in the contemporary period in 2001 and it was written uh, seven years after the first democratic elections in South Africa. And you will remember that democracy in South Africa came about in 1994. And I think this year we celebrate 26 years of democracy. Also, the play explores the question, what do we do with the freedom now that we've won? Now that we've won the, you know, the democratic right to be free, what do we do with that freedom? And you will remember that um, uh, the play that we did yesterday was Albert looks at the possibilities that comes about with freedom if we are free. Whereas this play looks at what do we do with the freedom now that we actually, you know, now that we have it. The uh, play largely ref reflects on the experiences uh, in South Africa of the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Commission hearings or the, 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 the TRC hearings. And you might ask yourself what exactly the TRC is. You might have heard about this thing, TRC, but what is a TRC actually? So the TRC uh, is a project or a, a commission that helped uh, uh, South Africans deal with major human rights violations that took place during apartheid. It was a court style setup which allowed victims of you know apartheid um, atrocities to, to share their stories or the families of people who were murdered during apartheid by you know by 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 apartheid police. They got to appear before the commission and say how much terror apartheid has caused them and their families. But equally so, it also helped perpetrators to share their stories and uh, account for what they did, and in so doing, also to ask for forgiveness. Um, the TRC, or the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, took the form of you know various public meetings that were held in various parts of the country. Um, you will, your parents might remember what exactly happened with regards to the TRC. It was apparently a very emotional roller coaster. Me, myself, I was quite young, so I don't remember it. But it was also televised on television. So people's trauma was very much, you know, put up for display. But also the whole country was invested in what the outcomes of these hearings would be. Uh, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was also a platform for perpetrators to apply for amnesty. Um, amnesty means that you are legally pardoned for what you have done. If you are, if you are were in the wrong, you are applying for amnesty. I'm not sure whether you can still apply for amnesty in South Africa for things that you have done, but the TRC basically gave people the opportunity to do so. So in terms of the story, um, nothing but the truth, um, the story uh, is basically focused around Sipo Makaya, an older man, he's a librarian in New Brighton, and uh, he lived a hard and painful life. So at the time of the TRC hearings, Sipo is struggling with his own personal truth and, and his recon uh, and, and reconciliation process. Uh, you will see that he has sort of conflict with his brother, Temba, who uh, is deceased, uh, and he also has some conflict with Mandisa and then also his own daughter, Tando. Uh, 
Uh, so the conflict that he has is within himself. He has conflict with his family. He has conflict with his past. And he has conflict with his present uh, situation in the new democratic South Africa. Remember, as much as there was a transition to democracy and people were asking to be free, they are, were now also faced with a new reality, this freedom and what did they have to do with their freedom? How could they make this freedom work for them? And that was a very strong point of contention for, for the Sipo character. Sipo's memories um, of the problems between him and his activist brother, Temba, um, is brought out throughout the play. And Temba, you will recall from the play that Temba dies uh, while he is in exile in London. Also, Mandisa uh, is uh, Mandisa McKay is the daughter of Tan of Temba, who was born in the in London, and um, she actually brings Temba's remains back to South Africa, and it's the first time that Sipo, uh, who is her uncle, and Tando, who is her cousin, meets her. The play suggests a few things, and I'll just be going deeply into this. Remember that I'm not supposed to be teaching you about the play. We This is merely a revision, a revision session, so it is, you know, little action points that you need to remember about the play. So the play invites us to think about how hard it was to live under apartheid, but also how to make South Africa a better place in future. That is at the center of, of the themes that the play wants to bring about. The play also suggests that, that freedom uh, brings about responsibilities and the core responsibility of us in the new democratic South Africa, well, it's not so new anymore, uh, is to reconcile with people. And um, more broadly, if you want to interrogate this thing of reconciliation, um, yes, reconciliation needs to take place, but also reparations need to be paid for the wrong for the wrongdoings. And I think that is very much what the TRC was. The TRC, by airing, you know, the gruesome details of how people were tortured and tormented during apartheid, was very much, you know, the perpetrators sort of paying reparations for, for everything that they did um, under apartheid. Uh, nothing but the truth reflects on the challenges and the changes that faced South Africa in the early days of democracy. You'll recall just a few seconds ago that I mentioned that now that um, now that uh, South Africa is, you know, democratic uh, and free and liberated, uh, people had to deal with this, and and that brought about some challenges in that changes. Remember, not all of us adapt well to change. In the play, characters are able to come to terms with the past, and they find a sense of truth and justice and forgiveness and empowerment within themselves and with each other. And that is what ultimately leads to reconciliation. This play aims to put up a mirror um, at which we judge how we've been able to move on from apartheid. So the play's uh, title, uh, the title, Nothing But The Truth, uh, bears some significance. For those of you who are familiar with court dramas and things like that, you'll be familiar with um, before a witness gives evidence or if a witness takes a stand or even anybody who takes a stand in court, uh, they must lay an oath. And the oath is, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Uh, so the uh, the title of the play comes out of that phrase, nothing but the truth. Um, and given the fact that the TRC had a courtroom sort of set up, you can sort of see what the significance of the title is. Also, people giving evidence in the in the TRC hearings also had to lay this oath because um, if they were in contravention of that oath, the amnesty may not have been you know granted if they were a perpetrator and if they were a victim. Uh, you know, sort of saying false things under oath. They may have faced, you know, criminal charges uh, for that. The title, Nothing But The Truth, suggests that it will reveal some deep and hidden truths uh, uh, about, you know, the characters. Also, John Carney, who is a playwright, he suggests that by accepting nothing but the truth, us as a nation can move forward and reconcile with each other. So the, the the play has some th um, has a particular setting and particular themes. You'll recall that the play is set in Port Elizabeth, in a township called New Brighton, where um, Sipo is a librarian and also where he he, he is uh, from. 
Um, the characters in the play, they talk of historical events that took place in South Africa, as well as real political activists, uh, activists who struggle uh, against apartheid. The play um, is very much uh, real in that regard. None of the events are fictional, I mean, non-fictional, uh, they're all fictional, or, uh, none of the events are fictional, sorry. Um, they refer to real events, they refer to real TRC hearings, like, you know, like the Cradock 4 and things like that. Cradock 4 bears particular significance because it's mentioned in the play and also because it's a town very close to PE, which is where the play is set. Also, um, as I've mentioned, um, the play deals with the theme of truth and reconciliation, which I've mentioned. You look at sibling rivalry, like the rivalry that there was between Sipo and Temba. Also being the victim or taking responsibility, which is very much the internal conflict that the Sipo character has to deal with. As well as um, traditional versus modern culture. Uh, in one of the questions that I will look at, um, revision questions, a, a, a specific question that looks at what are the examples of African and Western culture that come to the fore in the play? And then I will speak to this point. And then also it looks at political elites versus the ordinary person. So um, there are a number of dramatic devices that are used in the play uh, that, you know, helps the play with, you know, bringing about its meaning. And I'll mention a few of them. You'll, you'll remember that the play makes use of a passbook and also the baptism certificate, the baptismal certificate, and that is used as documents to represent apartheid because it's documents that were printed in the apartheid era. So it's used as a device to represent apartheid. Also, you'll remember the blazer, and the blazer is a symbol of the sibling rivalry uh, between Temba uh, and Sipo. The urn in which Mandisa brings the um, the urn in which Mandisa brings the the remains uh, of Temba is a uh, a symbol for the conflict between traditional and modern culture. And why is that? Because Sipo was, you know, expecting his uh, Temba's remains to come back in the form of his body or bones and things like that. But no, it came in an urn in the form of ashes, which isn't, cremations aren't necessarily accepted in African culture. So that is how the urn is a symbol for the conflict between traditional and modern culture. Also, um, the wedding dress uh, that, um, Tando is to wear is designed by Nandiba uh, Madikiza and it symbolizes the link between South Africa and the rest of the world because um, the character Mandisa is a a fashion student in the UK and she's fascinated by this African design so um, she I think that she adopts it in her sort of practice obviously that is outside of the world of the play, but she adopts she adopts this African style of design outside of a play. And that is how there is a link between South Africa and the rest of the world in terms of fashion. Also, you'll remember in the play that there is an African public library uh, that is built in New Brighton, the first African public library. And this is a symbol for black empowerment as well as a symbol that says that education is important for everyone. It's a symbol for the new life that Sipo now lives and where he takes responsibility and where he is no longer a victim. So now that I've gone about, you know, explaining briefly what the play is about, I think that it's time that we look at a question. Remember that um, these questions, I will help you look at how to unpack these questions and also how to make uh, the best uh, use of um, the resources that are available to you, how to add, dissect a question, how uh, to how to know exactly what is expected of you. This question comes from section C of the Dramatic Arts paper uh, for grade 12, November 2018, National Cine Certificate. Section C is the section that deals specifically with um, South African theater from post-1994 to the contemporary period. Um, yeah, and in that section, you are allowed to answer on one play because obviously you would have only studied one play under that period. Um, question 5.4 asks to explain <clears throat> why Sipo Makaya is shocked and angry that his late brother Temba has been cremated. Um, we just touched on uh, the reason uh, now, but um, just to go into, you know, the technicalities of the question, the question 
<laughs> is worth three marks and um, you are required to explain. So you could either give, you know, one paragraph answer and you'll get three marks, or you, if you give a body of three facts that are, you know, make sense, you'll also get those three marks. You are asked to explain. So you can just um, refer to an example in the play or the, the example in the play here is why Sipo is angry and you can give reasons. So Sipo is angry and shocked because the, the the custom of cremation is against his traditional beliefs as an African person. Uh, 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 and the African system of burial involves a coffin and a body. Also, he expected to fetch a body in a coffin at the airport and was surprised to find out that there would be no body to bury. Because you remember that he planned a funeral uh, in that regard. Also, he's angry with his family for not informing him uh, of Temba's death and the fact that Temba would be cremated and he feels that his wishes have not been heard or considered. That's part of the you know internal conflict that, that Temba um that um Sipo has to deal with. And then also he's frustrated because he uh, has spent so much time and effort to prepare and arrange a funeral. If you give any of those facts in such a question, you'd be well prepared uh, for to answer that question and you'd get good marks. And then the last question that we are looking at is evaluate how nothing but the truth reflects both Western and African cultures. It's also something that we just looked at. Remember to evaluate, it's a synonym for assess. And you know, when you assess, you need to make a judgment and you need to explain your judgment. It's six marks. Also a paragraph style answer. Um, you could give either six facts or you could give a, a proper body with three facts where you get two marks each. So evaluate how nothing but the truth reflects both our Western and African cultures. Here you need to obviously go into examples in the play and say how this is an example of a Western culture or how this is an example of an African culture. So African and Western um, uh, cultural traditions and practices are shown firstly, once again, by the belief systems regarding funerals. And the example that uh, that is given there is one that we just explained. African funerals involve the paying of respect to the dead, uh, to the deceased person's body in an open coffin and respecting his body, even when buried as ancestors. Um, are evoked in ceremonies and rituals after they are dead and buried. But what happened here, they were, uh, Timber was cremated, which is very much a Western uh, style of, you know, um, uh, celebrating a funeral. Also to think of Tando's um, uh, relationship with Mpo, um, she's engaged to him and she's going to marry him according to traditional custom. So marriage customs of Ilobolo or Mahadi um, and also Western um, marriage rituals. It's mentioned in the play when, when Mandisa and Tanto have this conversation about boyfriends. The paradox here is that, uh, and also where your answer comes from, is that Mandisa has had many boyfriends from different cultural backgrounds, um, Whereas Tando is in a relationship with Mpo, a long-standing relationship, she's engaged to him and she's going to marry him according to traditional custom. So there is another paradox of um, Western versus African culture bringing, coming forth in the play. Um, the Nuremberg trial, if you made a reference to the, for those of you who do um, history, the Nuremberg trial is a trial that was held similar to the TRC, um, uh, I think, uh, after the Holocaust. And then also um, the TRC uh, it was the sort of hearings that were held to bring about the sense of reconciliation in South Africa. So if you compared uh, the, the Nuremberg trial and the TRC uh, um, with uh, uh, the concept of Lehutla, which is a sort of, you know, a gathering of um, similar, uh, a customary gathering in African culture, but it's just called a Lehutla versus the Western concept of a court. Also, the relationship differences between parents and children um, comes out in the play when you see Mandisa being disrespectful towards the elders versus Sipo and um, Tando's, uh, 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 well, it's shown in the way she speaks to Sipo, but then also that versus Tando's respectful responses to Sipo. That's again another paradox of Western versus African as it comes out in the play. And then lastly, also another fact that I've mentioned, the African traditional dress is seen in Anandipa's designs. Tando 
who is getting married has a dress designed by Nandipa Kalana. And uh, this is uh, different from Western design, which interests uh, Mandisa as a fashion design student from the UK. So if you uh, um, answered your uh, if you answered the play in the in line with any of the things that I just mentioned, then you would get your six marks and you would ace that question. Uh, yeah. And that brings us to the end of today's session. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, the next session will be looking at uh, will be looking at twenty first century theatre movement, specifically epic theatre and theatre of Bertolt Brecht. Looking specifically at the play The Caucasian Chalk Circle. My name is Lancelot August, and you are watching Grade Twelve Dramatic Arts Exam Revision powered by the Amakawe Collective, a non-profit organization that aspires to create theater for change.